everyone, and welcome to another edition of MRN Out Loud. I'm Woody Kane. It's presented by Money Lion and also brought to you by Hercules Tires. You know, as we get set to go racing at Charlotte Motor Speedway this weekend, the second track in NASCAR's return, it's also time for the Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series to come back as well. Johnny Sauter, the former champ, will join us from Thor Sport Racing. A little bit later on, Greg Stucker will be here from Goodyear to tell us what's up with the tires this weekend at Charlotte, and he's got a stat you won't believe about how many racing tires Goodyear makes in a year. And connectivity has become huge as most folks have been operating under stay-at-home orders. So Matt Letterer from Comcast Xfinity will be here to talk about what the stats show in terms of how the numbers have gone up while we're all working from home. Plus, he's got some information on a couple of new programs that they have going on you want to find out more about as well. It's all ahead on this week's edition of MRN Out Loud. Stay with us. Did you know that banks collected over $15 billion in unnecessary bank fees last year? Come on, enough is enough. It's time we took back control of our finances. That's why Moneyline is proud to bring you the financial crew chief and to be a NASCAR sponsor. Look, no one knows more about hard work and pursuing their dreams than NASCAR fans, drivers, and teams. So we want to bring you the kind of banking that the big banks would never build, with features like zero fee checking and zero fee investment accounts. And because life is also meant for a join, with Money Lion, NASCAR fans get even more. We're giving away 1,500 NASCAR tickets to our members this year. Plus, you can get 5% cash back on NASCAR tickets, at track purchases, and all purchases at NASCAR.com. Learn more at MoneyLion.com or download our app. This is America's most powerful financial membership. Money Lion, here we roar. Welcome back to MRN Out Loud, and we are headed to Thor Sport Racing now. Former champ Johnny Sauter is there, along with the GM for Thor Sport, David Pepper. Guys, and let's start off by talking about the elephant in the room right behind you, a shiny new truck with some new logos on there. Tell me about what we've got. Uh, we're uh, unveiling, uh, we're going to unveil in Atlanta, uh, a new partner for Johnny's Trucks for the balance of the season. Um, Sakar International and uh, Vivitar uh, was going to join us uh, for the balance of the season. We're going to have the first race and do a press conference, and that didn't uh, work out. So we've kind of done alternate things to try to let everybody know the exciting news of what's happening and what we're going to be doing the rest of the year with these beautiful silver trucks and a, a brand new partner to our family. That's fantastic. With everything that's going on, to be adding a new sponsor is just just welcome news for sure. Johnny, are you chomping at the bit to get back at it? I know you got a house full of kids. You're probably ready for a break, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't say it any better myself, actually. So, um, yeah, it's nice to, to, to be around home a little bit, but it's uh, also really nice to go go to the racetrack and strap the helmet on and, and, and go race. So, um, yeah, just really excited, obviously, to have a new partnership with uh, All Tech Lansing and Vivitar and, and Sakara International. Um, like Pepper mentioned, we were supposed to, you know, have this unveiling in, in, uh, in Atlanta, and it didn't quite work out that way. So um, looking forward to getting to go to Charlotte on May 26th and, and get the season backfired up. And uh, it's, we've had a great start to the year, so I'm looking forward to picking up where we left off. So um, we do have a new partnership and, uh, you know, for the whole floor sport, the, the group here. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us, and, and uh, we're looking forward to capitalizing on it when we get back to the racetrack for sure. David, you guys are one of the bigger, if not the biggest, truck team. And I know for some of the smaller teams, this has been a very difficult time. But just because you have a lot of resources and a lot of people doesn't necessarily mean it's been easy. What's it been like at the shop there? You guys haven't been able to, to get back to work until recently, I assume. So what's it been like there to keep uh, everything going like you need it to go to be ready when it's time to come back? To be quite honest with you, and I know everybody says it, but uh, we truly mean it. We, we've got some of the best ownership Duke and Ronda Thorson uh, that you could possibly have. Uh, you know, we came back from Atlanta and we were here for about two weeks working and, and we kind of saw what was coming down the pipe that we might not be able to work all the way through this. And so, you know, they kind of allowed us to really go to work and we racked up some overtime and really got to, ahead of the game building trucks and hanging bodies and, and doing a lot of things. And, and then when we came back, uh, you know, last week when the uh, stay-at-home order was lifted, we went right back at it. Uh, we have every resource we need. We had, uh, you know, no layoffs, no furloughs. Uh, you know, do kind of plan in place. Uh, his business plan is is outstanding, keeping this team going. And uh, you know, we're we're just 
We're just preparing to go racing. I know everybody likes to say that, but I think Johnny can speak to that. He came here uh, last week for the first time in a few weeks, and, and the fleet of trucks across the board, not only his his uh, 13 trucks, but just across the board at Thorsport, this is as many trucks as we have prepared to go racing as we've ever had here. So we really, honestly, have had very few of any hiccups other than the guys got a little break in the action, and recharged their batteries, and we're ready to go racing. Johnny, you've been around long enough to where you've had some situations in the truck series, too. You're kind of on again, off again. Any concerns at all about rust when you get back to Charlotte, or will the, uh, the eagerness and the adrenaline kind of carry you right through that? Yeah, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, experience is uh, something that I have. So, um, yeah, I, I don't see us having any problems whatsoever. I think, if anything, uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier, um, you know, just from the competition standpoint where I look at, you know, just the 13 group, uh, obviously, I have teammates and all that, but when I look at our group, I feel like we're really refined on, on some of the stuff that we're, we're working on and, and trying to take to the racetrack. So, um, you know, we'll pick up where we left off in Vegas. Uh, that was a great day for us, and, uh, you know, I, I feel like, you know, we're in a great spot. Like Pepper mentioned a minute ago, as far as our trucks and, and just our group is concerned, um, there's more trucks lined up around here uh, than, than I've ever seen and, and, and quality stuff. So. Um, to me, that's exciting, knowing that we're going to the racetrack with, with stuff that's, you know, ready to win. So we just, we've got to make that happen. Uh, David, any concerns about the logistics as we get back here? All the series are going to be even busier than they were before. You guys might have had some breaks in there now, but they may evaporate as we get back to action, right? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, we're, we're obviously, you know, being kind of here in our own area, um, we have to do things a little bit differently, you know, but not really. I mean, you know, we're, we'll take a few extra vans to spread folks out. But as far as traveling to and from the races, you know, we'll get there. there the events will be a little shorter with no practice and qualifying, so that'll take some getting used to. And uh, just, you know, the guidelines that NASCAR has put forth, um, I know they're going to be tweaking them after we see the races this week at, at Darlington coming up. But, you know, they've got a really good handle on what we need to do, and, and we'll kind of abide by those guidelines. And, and hopefully put on a good show and we'll travel back and forth and take a limited number of people, obviously, like everybody else is. And, and I think it'll be fine. I, I really don't see, uh, see it being as big a deal as, as a lot of folks would think it would be. Now let's wrap up with this, Johnny. I, I, I know everybody has kind of been homeschooling and all this, whether they like it or not. You with a house full of kids, four, I think. Have you turned into the school principal now? And how's that role working out? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, the first couple of weeks I was trying to be more involved, and I, I, uh, I have a whole new respect for, for teachers and what they're trying to accomplish, uh, not only the teaching aspect of it, but the patience part of it. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of backed myself out of that program a little bit. I've turned more of that to Courtney, so um, she, she's better for that. But, uh, yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's, um, you know, there's a lot of people that, that are put in situations that they probably never thought they'd be put in. Um, quite frankly, so um, I think a lot of people are adjusting, but uh, yeah, it's all good. I mean, uh, I think as a, as, a, as a nation, we're pretty resilient, so um, I think everybody's figuring it out and, uh, you know, fortunate that some of the things are getting turned back on or getting ready to go back to the racetrack, but uh, homeschooling is uh, definitely not for this guy, I can tell you that. Me neither. I admire everybody who can do it and make it work. Well, guys, look, we appreciate your time. Johnny Sauter, former champ, and David Pepper, the GM of Thor Sport Racing. Congratulations on the new sponsorship and can't wait to see you guys back at the track. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Coming up next, Greg Stucker from Goodyear will join us. Stick around. Next time those engines roar, don't just get pumped up. Get 5% cash back with Money Lion. Our members get 5% cash back on up to $2,000 in annual purchases of tickets to a NASCAR race from authorized ticket sellers. You'll also get 5% off any at-track purchases and all purchases on NASCAR.com. Just use your Moneyline debit card and it couldn't be easier. Join the world's most powerful financial membership, Moneyline. Here we roar. 
Wherever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. You can count on Hercules Tires to have your back when times are tough, all while adding money to your pocket. The purchase of four qualifying Hercules Tires through May 31st, 2020 could get you up to a $70 Visa prepaid card. Visit HerculesTire.com slash spring rebate to learn more. That's HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Sir, are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top nine miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American Racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. Time now for our financial crew chief segment where we talk about the upcoming race weekend. This week, we've got Greg Stucker from Goodyear on hand to tell us about what's going on at Charlotte Motor Speedway, as well as the bigger picture in terms of tires. It's presented by Money Lion, the world's most powerful financial membership. Money Lion, here we roar. Greg Stucker is Goodyear's director of racing, and he joins us now to talk about what we've seen and what we're going to see in the future. Greg, one race under your belt, and I saw where in Goodyear's release for the weekend, you said it's important to be nimble right now, and I guess that's kind of the watchword for everybody, isn't it? I think so. I think that's one thing we've all learned over the course of the last several weeks, Woody, is just just take it one day at a time. You know, I, I think NASCAR had a good plan as we opened up racing, but, you know, that plan was the, the last Last of a lot of iterations over the last several weeks to try to adjust to, you know, to the situation at large and the individual states uh, circumstances and just making sure that we did all the right things to, you know, to get where we all wanted to be. Uh, and that was back on the racetrack. So my hat's off to them. We've been working with them very closely for the last several weeks to, to figure out what our role is in that schedule. But I think we're off to a great start and we're just going to have to continue to be nimble and, uh, and adjust as we need to. Speaking of that, I also understand that the tire that was used and is being used at Darlington is same for both Cup and Xfinity, but it's the same one that would have been used at Homestead. Is that right? That's correct. You know, this is the tire that, that we raced here at Darlington last year, and then we raced the same combination at Homestead at the end of the 2019 season. And these actual tires had already been produced, were mounted and ready to go to Homestead. You know, a lot of people might not realize, but we pre-mount hmm. about 75 to 80% of the tires before we get to the racetrack. So we, we mount them at our facility in Cornelius outside of Charlotte. Uh, and then we ship the mounted assemblies to the racetrack. If you recall, everything started, started to change as we were sitting in Atlanta and Homestead was the next race on the calendar. So those tires were ready to go. We simply kept them in Cornelius, uh, kept them mounted, uh, segregated them by a team and just kind of waited out and, and to see, you know, what the next step was going to be thinking, OK, we're going to go back to Homestead or, or maybe, you know, use them somewhere else. And, and sure enough, Darlington came up, you know, as the opening race. Mm -hmm. And so we just switched them over to, to use for Darlington instead of Homestead. And, uh, you know, as we go back to Homestead, if we do soon, then we'll we'll rebuild those tires to, to go back to Homestead. So it actually worked out very well for us uh, as we work through with NASCAR. Just because um, I, I really don't know the answer, I'm curious, and excuse my ignorance, but what is the lifespan of a tire that's just sitting there? It's not like milk in your fridge. How long can it last? Uh, you know, they, they could last for years. As long as you keep them, you know, stored in, in the right environment, uh, our facility is temperature controlled. We try not to keep tires on the racing side of business, you know, longer than several months. Uh, we may use tires that are nine or 10 months old uh, as leftovers from one year into the next, but that's kind of a rare occasion. We usually make fresh production for every cup race for sure, and then carry some of those leftovers, uh, you know, from cup races into an Xfinity race into a truck race uh, as we go throughout the year. So we try to keep them as fresh as possible, but, you know, as long as tires are maintained and protected, uh, they can last several years. You, you might remember several, several years back, um, you know, one of the first times we ran, uh, we ran a, a wet race uh, up in Montreal for the yeah. Xfinity uh, cars, you know. Those tires were actually several years old, hmm. and um, and they worked, uh, you know, very, very well, again, because we had stored them well, uh, kept them, you know, in a temperature-controlled environment, and, uh, and, and 
and just made sure they were in good shape. We talked with a lot of the teams about what it's been like to gear up and then shut down and then gear back up again. For Goodyear, what has that been like for you guys? Because you have to build up some inventory similar in some respects, so the teams have to get some cars ready well ahead of time, but then to shut down and start back up again. What's that been like for Goodyear? You know, it's it's been a challenge uh, just, you know, with the, the ebb and flow of, of the way the schedules have, have been evolving. It, it, as a company, we, we basically, uh, you know, shut down uh, slowed down uh, back in uh, the middle of uh, middle of March, and uh, just a week or so later, we actually closed our factory uh, right there. Innovation Center Manufacturing is is our manufacturing plant where we produce all of our race tires right in Akron. So, so uh, the plant has been down until uh, just last Monday uh, when we uh, when we brought it back up. So fortunately, prior to the the COVID uh, situation, we had actually. Uh, produced everything up through the end of May. So everything, you know, like from Martinsville and Talladega and Atlanta, obviously I mentioned Homestead, Charlotte was already produced, Kansas. So we were in, you know, we were in good shape. We were at least 60 days ahead for all the events. Of course, that that kind of quickly came to a halt. So yeah. if you look at this, at the upcoming schedule, you know, we're going to go to Charlotte next week. We're going to go to, you know, we're going to go to Atlanta. We're going to go to Martinsville. We're going to go to Bristol. All those tires are produced. So okay. we're in good shape as we work through this next series of events, you know, but beyond that, we've been working with NASCAR and staying very close on what the next events are so we can make sure that we're producing the right tires. So uh, that's going to be the challenge from here on out, you know, as things evolve, as the weekend formats evolve, right? Mm-hmm. Is You know, we're not having practice. We're not having qualifying then we've got to adjust the quantity of tires that we produce, right? Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes Xfinity is going to run where they were scheduled to run, but they're, you know, they're not some other time. So the key, you know, is staying closely in tune with NASCAR as, as things evolve. And and we've been doing that, like I said, for several weeks. Uh, so we'll continue to do that and, and, and adjust the schedule. But it's been a real challenge. Uh, we've all been working from home and staying connected and, and making sure that all works. Uh, of course, I think everybody in the racing industry probably has a, probably has a leg up on a lot of people we we work out of the office a lot don't we when we're yeah. on the road from hotel rooms from your you know transporter at the racetrack so it's kind of second nature to us but yep. it's still a little bit different because normally you'll do that for three or four days while you're at the racetrack you return to the office and then think kind of things are back to normal well yeah kind you know, of now reset. normal isn't it? Yeah, yeah now it's you don't really reset you're you're working <laughs> from uh you're working for remotely day in and day out unfortunately we've got a, all the tools to do that so um you know it's been an adjustment but i, I think everybody settled into you know to kind of the routine and uh uh, again, we've got uh, we've got a plan, and and we'll stay on top of it. You mentioned the upcoming schedule, and in particular, I'm curious about Charlotte because in years past, for the Memorial Day weekend for the Coca-Cola 600, you guys have done special tires. Is that the case again for this coming yeah. weekend? That is still the case. You know, it just all this stuff doesn't change Memorial Day, right? It's, yeah. it's still a very special weekend. You know, those tires, as I mentioned, those were already produced. Uh, those have already badged with the Honor and Remember logo. So, uh, you know, a good way to remember uh, everybody that does what they do for us. And uh, so that, that's still going to be the case. You know, we're glad to be part of that at the NASCAR Salutes uh, weekend and, um, you know, looking forward to it. Just out of curiosity, how many racing tires for the NASCAR side will you guys produce in a year? Well, we make right around a hundred thousand, perhaps a little bit less, but probably a little bit less this year, uh, mm-hmm. just because of uh, the adjustments and schedules. But that's that's usually the number. It's uh, it's been higher some years, it's been lower some years, but that's a good rough number. Greg, uh, let's finish up with this. We had heard that that NASCAR had put off the the new car coming in for next year because of everything that's gone on to kind of delay that a little bit. And I haven't heard anything recently about tire testing. I imagine that's kind of uh, in limbo, like uh, uh, the rest of the schedule is. But there are there any tire tests planned in the near future or long-term future nothing on the on the short term or long term uh, woody i think you know with the whole delay of the next gen vehicle obviously there was a very aggressive testing schedule laid out between the car itself uh, the manufacturers the teams and us to try to get ready for the 2021 season and obviously a big change for us going from a 15 inch wheel diameter to 18 inch um, wider tire um, you know a lot of different requirements so right now i think we're all going to work together to try to get our feet back on the ground with uh, with 2020, uh, with the way the situation is, and, and make sure that we get the schedules bolstered up and try to you know get back to some sort of normal uh, racing, and then sit back down with NASCAR and probably the OEMs and say, okay, where you know where do we pick up? Where do we go from here uh, with regard to this gen vehicle? We I think we will probably try to still do a couple of tests before the end of this year for the next gen vehicle. Uh, obviously, the the cars are there, the prototypes you know have been produced. We're 
we're actually in a pretty good spot, you know, from a tire perspective and equipment. So I think we'll go ahead and try to use some of this time to maybe get a little bit ahead of the ball game. And then it won't be such a frantic pace, I think, uh, you know, as we get ready for the actual racing season in 2022. Uh, maybe we can get a little bit ahead of the curve and, and be at a little, little bit better spot to provide something closer to what the teams will actually be racing on when they finally start to do their testing uh, on the new vehicle. So it's a bad way to come about things, but I think without a doubt, it was the right decision for everybody. Let everybody get focused on 2020 and, and, and get back to normal racing. And then uh, and then we move forward with uh, with the next-gen vehicle. Hopefully that works out and you guys get to get a little bit ahead now. Everybody would like to do that the way <laughs> things have been going. And boy, I can't wait to see those patriotic tires this weekend at the Charlotte Motor Speedway uh, for Memorial Day. It's always a special sight. Greg, I appreciate your time and thanks for joining us. As always, Woody, thank you very much. Glad to do it. There you go. Greg Stucker is the director of racing for Goodyear. The return of drifting, drafting, the return of the slide job, ripping the wall, gas and go, bump and run, the return of loud. NASCAR is back, and Xfinity is bringing you the best seat in the house. Wow, welcome back indeed. Xfinity has put that spot up, and it is certainly a, a welcome return to the sport for them and everyone to be able to see actual race cars on the track. We're joined now by Matt Letterer, the Vice President of Brand Partnerships and Activation at Comcast, but we know him through the Xfinity brand, and that's where uh, we reached out to try and get you guys to chat with us a little bit, Matt, and thanks for coming on the program. It's, uh, it's certainly uh, a, a welcome return for sure to see real race cars on the track. Nothing against iRacing, but there's nothing like those real race cars. Well, I completely agree. I appreciate you having me and um, couldn't be more excited as, as a fan to, 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 to get to get watch these guys race again. But then obviously as a brand that's actively involved in this sport, we're, we're excited that it's back and we're excited to, uh, you know, to be back engaging with the fans. And it's a little bit of a different way, but at least we're back. Tell me a little about the spot because it's not, hey, uh, Xfinity, great, great, great. It's more racing, racing, racing. And then at the end, oh, by the way, Xfinity, we're still a part of this. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, what do we thought about this when um, NASCAR made the announcement in terms of when they were coming back? And obviously we have a lot of media presence in the sport across TV, radio, and, and you hit it, right? I mean, our, our message and tone to the NASCAR fans has been about our great products, specifically the Internet product. And that's not changing. But as we kind of stepped back, we said, you know what, let's let's remember why we're in this. And we're in this because we're fans, just like everybody else. And let's go and celebrate that. You know, um, we need a little bit of happiness and joy uh, right now, especially as sports fans, to have something back. And we just felt it was more appropriate for us right now to be just celebrating some form of return, you know, to the sport and, and making sure people understood as a brand that we're excited as they are uh, for the return of this sport. And in this case, the way we've positioned it in our spot, the return of loud. Um, so yeah, we, we made it, we made a change for these coming weeks and, um, we're, we're going to be watching as fans, just like everybody else. We wanted to make sure that came through in our spot. It's really cool to see. And I love that, that theme, the return of loud, but one of the yeah. reasons we wanted to talk to you, I mean, we all know, and through our history and through what we've lived through personally, that we've seen crises in the, in the country before nine 11, different wars, different other situations, but this is the internet age. And, and I think everybody was kind of uh, a little surprised about how much we have become dependent on staying connected. And that's your specialty at Xfinity. What kind of things have you guys seen in terms of the extra demand on the internet? Because there have been a lot of stories about mom, dad, the kids, everybody at home trying to do everything at once. What have you guys seen? Yeah, I'm sure everybody's got different stories on how this is impacting them from a work from home, from a live at home, from general content and information consumption. And you're right, this has been a experience unlike anything else that we've been through as a, as a country. And it's been a unique one for us at a company that is all about connecting. And when you think about what we're going through right now, that connection is so important. I've heard so many stories and I've been doing them personally, where during this time we're connecting with people that we haven't connected with in years, college friends, high school friends. I'm hearing all of these stories pop up. And I know we at Xfinity are really proud of what we've been able to do for the country and for our customers in this time frame. The performance of our network has been really, really strong. We have a whole bunch of employees who truly are you know, frontline heroes because they're still out there 
making sure the network is up and running, responding to problems and responding to problems with customers in a way that's respectful and healthy to both our technician and, and the customer. And we couldn't be prouder of what we're seeing. From a demand standpoint, you know, we're seeing a 33% increase in upstream traffic, so people pulling information off. And when you think about the size of our network and our customer base, we're talking 20 million plus internet customers, to have a 33% increase mm. of traffic is really tremendous. And we are performing, our technicians, listen to this, is, are performing over 700,000 network diagnostic speed tests per day. And they've been doing this you know, since the middle of March when this all hit. So it's really been a tremendous use case and a case study of where things are going. I'll throw you a couple other fun little facts. And I don't know, Woody, if you've got kids or know people, but gaming. And we yeah. talked a little bit about iRacing, right? Mm-hmm. Gaming downloads are up 35%. Since this has happened. And and some of this becomes, well, of course, that makes sense. That's what people are doing. I know here in my house, I'm watching my 15-year-old game a lot more than he did before. You know, and so we're seeing unique things. We're seeing unique things in terms of when people are consuming content, in terms of when they're streaming videos, what days of the week. They're all sort of becoming the same, right? So it's really been it's really been interesting to see how our network performs. But the other thing we've seen is, you know, our one of the things that you can do with our internet is about control. Mm-hmm. Um, right, with speed coverage control. And one of the features we let people do is actually pause their Wi-Fi and shut it off. And you normally see this spike, relatively speaking, during dinner time and at night. Mm-hmm. What's really fun is now we're seeing a third time that it somewhat peaks, and that's during lunchtime. Hmm. And so what we're actually seeing from a family dynamic standpoint is, yeah, people are pausing it when it's time for the family to go to bed. People are pausing it for dinner. And now we've added actually another time. And I know I'm living it, right? To, <laughs> to be working from home with, a, with my two kids and my wife and to be able to every once in a while sit down and have lunch and dinner with them. It's I don't want to say it's been a positive thing of this, but yeah. it's been something where we've connected. Uh, as well. And we're seeing that behavior within our customer base as well. It's amazing. 33, 35% is, is nothing to uh, sneeze at. But I mean, it's it's interesting to me because a lot of the same people are doing a lot of the same things. They're just doing it in different locations. And I have a, yep. a mental image of the internet being sort of like the road system. You have bigger roads, which are internet, which I would equate to, you know, the, the bigger part of cities and business areas, and then smaller roads out into the rural neighborhoods. Does internet kind of equate to that at all? A little bit. I mean, obviously, our network performs, you know, across the board, whether it's, you know, big cities or or rural areas, there's increased density, obviously, in certain areas. But from a consumer behavior standpoint, we're we're seeing fairly consistent across uh, all of our country, all of our footprints across the country. One of the other things that we have seen is not everyone has the same connectivity. And I know you guys have been doing some things like with Wi-Fi hotspots and waiving some fees and things like that as the whole country is challenged. What have you done to help people connect? Yeah, you know, I think when this all hit, we sort of focused on two groups of people. First and foremost, employees. We've all now, whoever can, we we are now all working from home. But we've also moved more than 95% of our call center reps. That's 10 to 20,000 people Mm. who are answering phones. And we've migrated them to work from home. And we did that within days when when this hit. We have um, made sure that any essential people that need to be out working, you know, not at home and be on the road, like we talked about technicians, putting new policies and procedures in place to make sure that they are safe as well as protecting our customers. And obviously the second group we focused on was our customers. And we're doing a whole bunch of things in that space. So, you know, first and foremost, we, we understand some of the economic hardship that people are going through and, and we're working with our customer base. We have waived late fees. We are not disconnecting anybody right now for their inability to pay any sort of bill because we understand that disconnecting somebody at this point is, is disconnecting a lifeline and we cannot do that. We are opening up our Wi-Fi hotspots, not just free to all of our customers, but free to everybody. So we have over a million and a half outdoor Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots across the country, and they are available for free to anyone who needs them. And how can um, folks find out where those are and how to use them? Well, first of all, you can always go to Xfinity.com slash prepare and okay. find out all of that information. But obviously, when you're out and about and you're on your phone, if, if you're in a hotspot, you're going to see that pop up in your SSID as an available Mm -hmm. Uh, Wi-Fi hotspot and you'll be able to connect, you know, immediately, you know, there. You know, the other thing we're doing is our Internet Essentials product, which is something we've used and talked about in the NASCAR space. Internet Essentials is a um, product we launched years ago for lower income families. And we've we've extended that to make sure that's there for lower income veterans and especially children who are in need. It's $9.95 normally, but now it is free 
for any new customer through June 30th. In addition, we've increased and doubled the speeds of that product. Again, because we know that this product was based on low-income families, especially when you think about the way kids learned, even prior to this, it's essential and now even more so now. So just make sure that they can be connected and that the kids can learn and not have to worry about you know any sort of cost has been a, has been a really great thing. And then the other thing we're doing is content, right? At the end of the day, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm watching more content oh, yeah. uh, you know, at night with the family. And so whether it be um, a partnership with Common Sense Media, where we have thousands of hours of free educational content you know, for students K through 12, mm-hmm. or whether it's bringing movie premieres directly to your couch versus a movie theater that you can't go to right now. So we have, we have, we premiered Trolls, you know, in home <laughs> yeah. versus the movie theater. Uh, we've launched Peacock, which is a new streaming app from our friends at NBC, which is available to all of our Xfinity customers now free of charge. So we're really hitting it across the board, making sure that they stay connected, you know, respecting the economic hardships that people are going through. At the end of the day, making sure we're giving people content and enjoyment that they need during this time. The internet, and specifically through cable providers and that type of thing, has been very regionally based. So how can folks who might not live in an, a primary Comcast area try out what you have to offer? I know there's the streaming app that I've been using, and I love it. It's fantastic to be able to take it you know, on a trip with you, and not that we've been traveling lately, but before everything shut down. But how can folks get involved and find out what you've got to offer if they're cable provider is not necessarily Comcast or Xfinity. Well, the advice I always give people is move, right? Move to better market. Kidding, <laughs> Easier said than done. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, listen, uh, again, uh, I would point to the things we're doing with the Wi-Fi hotspots. Obviously, you know, we are a regional company at the end of the day and are only available in certain areas. But, you know, if anybody wants to see what we're doing for our customer base, again, I'd have them visit Xfinity.com slash prepare. And, and that provides some opportunity for people to look at what we're doing. And, and you know, if their current provider is not doing it, make sure they're, they're, they're asking why not and taking a look at what others are doing in the space. The Xfinity series is going to be very busy getting back to action as we try and yep. uh, have races that are drivable for the teams. Um, but we have the racing at Charlotte coming up, and I know you guys are getting involved with the Memorial Day Patriotic theme with some special uh, color schemes on the cars, at least in terms of identifying who's in them, right? Yeah, we've always um, really respected the NASCAR Salute to Service program and, and have partnered with them ever since we've been involved in the sport and we'll always partner with them. And so um, similar to what we've done in the past, you'll see red, white, and blue Xfinity branded windshield headers for the Xfinity cars at Charlotte that will honor our military heroes uh, and their families. It's something we've loved working on with them. We know the drivers in the series have always you know, enjoyed when that we've switched that header out from their name into the name of a a family member or a a military base as we've done in the past that they can honor. And it's the right thing to do. And we, um, we love being a part of the patriotism of this sport has something is that's so clear and evident and we love to support it, being able to change the branding up on the cars. Matt, one more time, how can folks find out more about what you're doing with the the COVID-19 response and, and what you have to offer? Yeah, appreciate that. And I would encourage everybody to go to Xfinity.com slash prepare. Uh, on that, you'll see everything that we're doing, um, you know, for our customers during this time. You'll be able to get to some of this, uh, the stats and data I was talking about earlier about our network performance. Um, and then more than anything, I hope everybody enjoys the racing for the next, uh, you know, b- very busy month or so and for the rest of the season. And, and you know, we look forward one day to seeing everybody back at track. But we really are looking forward to enjoying NASCAR racing with everybody from our couch. And don't forget about that Internet Essentials program. They're offering it for free through June 30th. That's Matt Letterer, the Vice President of Brand Partnerships and Activation at Comcast. But we know him better through the Xfinity brand. Matt, thanks for your time, and good luck as we come back racing. Thank you. Anytime. Well, that's all the time we've got on this week's edition of MRN Out Loud ahead of racing at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Make sure you join us right back here next week. MRN Out Loud has been presented by Money Lion and also brought to you by Hercules Times. I'm Woody Kane. Thanks for joining us.